of poetry lovers and poetry curious. I am here to read you two poems from Lake Effect Country by A.R. Ammons or Ammons. I don't know. I guess you read the stresses on that. So I guess what I will do, he's a very well-known poet from the 20th century, considered certainly one of the top poets. I hate to say, what do I say, top 50? He's in, he's in that middle area where there was just a lot of really, really good uh, middle period of the 20th century when there were just a, a lot of really good poets. Uh, publishing. So if you looked at the entirety of the 20th century, would he be chosen as one of them? I don't know. Like, would he be in the top 20? I don't know. But still, you, f you find him in most anthologies um, of the best poems of the 20th century. So very well known can't say that he's ever been one of my favorites, but this was 50 cents. It was in not even a bookstore, a whatnot shop that had a, pa a table of books. And whenever that happens and I see some poet poetry, even though I just thought, you know, he shouldn't even be here. <laughs> he shouldn't even be here. Um, so I saved him <laughs> and I read the book. And there were a number of poems that I liked, but I'm just going to read you the two that I really liked. So here we go. I'm going to make sure that I've got my... Just one second. And I have my volume turned up. Yep, I do. Okay. So the first one is Holding Still. And after we're done with this, I'll read you more about... Um, A.R. Ammons. Holding still. A whirlwind held still in the side yard this afternoon a minute. Three or four of last year's leaves, one split and one with a lobe ripped off, caught up. I thought the leaves at first astonishing butterflies, hardly enough figures there to point a whirlwind's center and traveling. But soon the structure broke away, its, its currents wobbling out of the wound-up winding. The leaves scooted up remnant loops and fell out randomly about. Still, the eye of the hop-wobbly baby rabbit crouched near, nearby under a small pine, still with a whirlwind in it. So I really like how the focus changes and how we travel with this whirlwind, barely able to see it because it has just a few leaves in it until it starts to disintegrate and the, um, the leaves are cast out of it or fall out of it because it's not strong enough to keep them aloft. And then our eye is turned to a baby rabbit, which is kind of unfortunate that it's a baby rabbit that is hop wobbly. In other words, it's not fully a rabbit yet. It's still a baby rabbit this late in the year. Um, but then he puts the whirlwind in the eye of the rabbit. So he goes from kind of a middle distance down to something very tiny and specific and puts the whirlwind in essentially the spirit of the rabbit who is still. So I, I like a lot and, and he does, his alliteration for the most part isn't heavy, but it hits some heavy moments, hop wobbly, uh, a wound up winding. So I really like this. In fact, so my poetry memorization project, which is at a standstill at the moment, um, I would like to 
include a lot of major poets of the 20th century, but some of the major poets like this one. <laughs> I have, don't have any poem that I have any affinity with within their work. It's like I know of them. I've read their poetry because I've read anthologies with their poetry in it, so I've read them, but none of their poetry really speaks strongly to me. But I really like this one, so this might be my A.R. Ammons representation. So the second poem that I'm going to read to you here is Exchangers. Exchangers. The spruce by the spruce bough looks so cold and stiff, and then the creaking wind picks up as if to dash motion into splinters and smithereens. The crows addled with no place to put down, lurch at least from branch to branch, spilling some snow or surge deeply down to cast off into flight. Burdens of snow then coming undone, the branch whipping up, flexible again into unloadedness, or excuse me, into loaded, into loadlessness. So the branch whipping up flexible again into loadlessness. Black crow weight to be born any time for such springy reprieves from white. So I love the whole uh, scene that he's setting here with the um, spruce boughs weighed down by snow, pretty much covered with snow. And the the crows attempting to land on it and knocking off a little snow and then landing more firmly and then flying up and at, as they fly up from the weight, uh, when the branch is loosed from the weight of the crows, it, it snaps back and knocks off more snow until there's enough snow knocked off for the crows to actually land on the bow. Yep, and so exchangers, that strikes me as a real weird kind of technical sort of term for the title. Um, I'm guessing that the boughs are exchanging the weight of the snow for the weight of the crows, which handily rhymes. <laughs> but um, that's what I get out of it. If you have any other idea about the exchange going on here, feel free to leave a comment. Yeah, so, so this gave me kind of a different, just by reading this one book gave me a bit of a, <clears throat> a different look at an impression of A.R. Ammons. So if I were to ever come across another one of his books, I would be more inclined to pick it up, but I don't know that I'm going to seek one out. Um, so these are all the books he had written up to this point. This book was pub published in 1983. Yep, 1983. So at this point, a long time ago. Um, here it mentions that his collected poems 1951 to 1971, um, a 20-year span there, won the National Book Award for Poetry. And then his next book, The Sphere, or Sphere, The, Mo the Form of Emotion, uh, was the winner of the 1973-74 Bollingen Prize in Poetry. And then A Coast of Trees, um, was the winner of the National Book Critics Circle Award for Poetry in 1981. So just to get racking them up, I can't remember uh, if he has won a Pulitzer Prize or not. Wouldn't surprise me if he has. I have no idea when he was deceased or anything like that. But on the back, it says he was born in Whiteville, North Carolina, and is presently, as of 1983, Goldwyn Smith Professor. Professor Goldwyn Smith, Professor of Poetry at Cornell University, um, and presenting at the National Book, 
Book Critics Circle Award in Poetry for 1981 to Emmons's uh, A Coast of Trees, Richard Locke, the editor of Vanity Fair, said in part, in the 30 years since A.R. Emmons published his first poems, he has fashioned a body of work that achieves a rare amplitude, specific gravity, and high seriousness. This is the way these people talk. <laughs> he is a poet of the American sublime, a nature poet, as we say, standing in the tradition of Wordsworth, Emerson, and Whitman. So now having read some of the poems here, I can see that. But from what I had read of him up to this point, I would not have known that and I would not have slotted him in that thing, which just, I guess, showed my ignorance and or it shows which poems were selected for anthologies, which were not the type of poems that I am finding here. So sometimes for anthologies, they're looking for things that are maybe more discussable in a classroom as opposed to whirlwinds and bunnies. <laughs> so, um, you know, or crows and snow and trees. So that may be why he, what I've seen of him represented in anthologies would not have given me this impression because I, I like Wordsworth and Whitman and I would not have associated him too much with them, particularly not Wordsworth. But anyway, onward we go with uh, Richard Locke's impressions of Ammons. And so we have his work pursues its own integrity, clear, unblinking in its self-knowledge, remarkable for its radiant density of argument and feeling. Again, this is the way these people talk. That's not what I, what I would have said. Was there an argument? Certainly, I would say there was some feeling. I do get his association from the two poems I just read, certainly with Wordsworth, although a much more spare Wordsworth. Um, and, you know, Whitman, okay, he's writing free verse. I'm not sure that I would associate with him with Whitman otherwise. But this is only one book. And, and a poet's poems can vary radically. Um, so, it, you know, just because he wrote this way in this book doesn't mean that, you know, I might find, like, there's not a lot of really long lines in this book. And it could very well be that he has a whole book where he has really long lines, or he went through a phase where he, he was writing in really long Whitman-esque lines. I don't, I don't know. Um, in any case, Emmons' work has been honored as a Guggen, by a Guggenheim Fellowship and Academy of American Academy of Arts and Letters Traveling Fellowship, the Levinson Prize, the National Book Award, the Bollingen Prize, an award from the National Institute of Arts and Letters, and most recently, a MacArthur Prize Fellow Award. Like I said, I'm not sure um, what else. He may have won after this, and it makes me curious. So I may look it up after I end this video so that you don't have to suffer through the screeching as I shift around my monitor and stuff like that. Um, and I'll put it down in the description box. How about that? All right, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.